welcome to today's virtual program. We're going to be spending some time outside looking at plants and thinking about what it is that makes them green. Um, plants are really important to the planet we live on and make life possible for us humans. They provide us with food to eat um, as well as oxygen to breathe. All the energy in the world comes from the sun. The sun keeps our planet warm and that's great. Who doesn't love a nice warm sunny day but it's plants that take that solar energy and change it into a form of energy uh, that can fuel us. Uh, this process uh, is called photosynthesis. Um, in photosynthesis, plants absorb energy from the sun, uh, carbon dioxide from the air, and water from the soil, and then in return, uh, they produce energy in the form of sugar and release oxygen into the air. I'm talking about sugar molecules, not candy. Plants don't really make candy, but they do make sugar molecules. Uh, the sugar molecules the plant makes are the most simple form of food and sort of the building block to every other food item that we eat, from chocolate chips uh, to chicken nuggets. It all starts with plants and the sugar that they produce. All green plants contain the same special green molecule called chlorophyll. Uh, chlorophyll comes from the Greek words chloros, that means color, and phil, that means leaf. So uh, the word itself uh, translates to the color of the leaf, and that's green. Uh, the chlorophyll molecule is essential. It's absolutely necessary for any plant to undergo photosynthesis. So if you were a plant and you wanted to grow as big and as tall as possible and have all the kinds of fruits and flowers, uh, you would need as much energy as possible. More energy means more photosynthesis, and more photosynthesis means more chlorophyll, and more chlorophyll means more green. The sunlight that we get down on Earth contains all colors of the rainbow, all within it. It comes down uh, invisible to us, um, but if you were to split that invisible light, you could see all the different colors of the rainbow, the whole Roy G. Biv. When we look at a leaf, or any object for that matter, um, we see the light that reflects off that object. So when we look at a green leaf, uh, the green light coming from the sun bounces off of it and comes to our eyes so that we see green. Uh, the colors that we can't see when we look at an object are is every color that object is absorbing. So a green plant absorbs red light, it absorbs orange light, it absorbs purple light, um, it absorbs some blue lights and some yellow lights, um, and then reflects the green light back to our eyes. Reds, blues, and purples are really important uh, to photosynthesis process, so that's the colors the plants want to absorb the most, is those reds and those blues. Underwater, life's a little different. Green light travels really well through water, but reds and blues don't go very deep. So many of the plants in the ocean absorb more green light and reflect reds and blues. That's why there's lots of reds and blue plants in the ocean. Um, but on the Earth's surface, uh, on the ground, uh, we get green plants. Not every plant is the same color of green. There's infinite shades of green. Some of them have names like lime green or forest green or chartreuse. Um, and then there's lots of colors all in between those colors that we don't even have names for. Um, but they're somewhere in that spectrum of green. In today's program, we're going to try and find as many different kinds of green as we can, whether that's in your backyard, uh, your garden, or maybe you have some house plants inside that you can take a look at. But before we go anywhere, let's talk quickly about the factors that contribute to what color of green, what kind of green uh, a leaf is, and, and why it might be that kind of green. So there's six different types of chlorophyll, and different levels of these different types of chlorophyll determines what color of green a plant might be. The levels of these molecules are determined by four things. The first thing is habitat. Where does the plant live and how much sunlight does it get? Plants that live in darker places and have limited sunlight typically are darker and they have more of the certain type of chlorophyll called chlorophyll B uh, that's better at collecting energy in low intensity sunlight. Plants that get a lot of sunlight are a lighter shade of green because they have a higher concentration of chlorophyll A. The second factor that affects what color of green a plant might be uh, is the leaf design. How thick or how thin uh, is the leaf? Uh, it kind of gets a little bit tricky here because there's thick dry leaves and then there's thick wet leaves. Um, but thick dry leaves tend to be darker because they have more density uh, of the things that hold the chlorophyll. The, the things that uh, contain the chlorophyll are called chloroplasts and thick 
dry leaves have more chloroplasts in them, so they become a little bit darker in color. Thick, wet leaves are a little bit lighter because they're watery and they have the chloroplast spread throughout the leaf uh, and more spread apart, so they have a little bit less chlorophyll uh, than the dry version. The third thing that might affect the color of green that a plant is is the leaf age. Is it a young, new leaf or is it an older, more mature leaf? Young leaves have yet to develop a fully functioning cell wall and they don't have the mechanisms for achieving photosynthesis as efficiently uh, as an older leaf. This gives it a little bit, little bit of a lighter color. Most mature leaves have fully operational systems and they are a little bit darker than the new leaves. And the last thing that affects the color of green that a plant might be uh, is deficiencies, the overall health of the plant. Just think about it, when you get sick and you change color too a little bit, you might get a little bit pale. Plants are no different. Nutrient deficiencies such as low levels of nitrogen, magnesium, iron, things like that can make a plant go yellow or yellowish green. So all these things can contribute to uh, what colors we see when we go out and look at some plants. Okay, here's your challenge. Print out one of the difficulty levels below. You have uh, not spicy, medium spicy, or holy wow that's spicy depending on how much difficulty you want. Uh, print it out. If you can't print it out, um, maybe you have an electronic device that you're allowed to take outside uh, and you can open that up on the screen and try and match things with nature with your images and your shades of green on your spiciness card. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our cards uh, and we're going to go and take maybe a small sample of leaf or take a picture of uh, a leaf and see if we can match it uh, to try and get all of the uh, shades of green on the paper that we chose. Uh, if we're harvesting any kind of plant material, uh, we only need to take a little bit, uh, no more than maybe the size of your thumbnail would be a good size. That's probably all you're going to need just to be able to color match. If you finish the not spicy one uh, and you want to take it up a level, you can try spicy uh, and then from there you can take it up to the last level of wow, that's spicy. Uh, totally up to you what you can find and it might depend on what you have around you and how big your area is. Okay, we've learned a ton about plants and the various shades of green, um, but let's go see if we can find uh, any of these various shades uh, this time of year. It's kind of early spring, things are looking a little bit brown, but there's always uh, things that are green in the world and we'll be able to find those. Okay, so here we have a Douglas fir, I believe. Um, and what we can do is we can uh, either take a needle or two um, or we can hold up our sheet um, and try and color match as best we can uh, to the three colors on my not spicy page um, and see. And I, I think it's probably this, this lighter one um, I think is probably the best match. So I'm going to say check to the light green and I'll go and search for the other two. Okay, here we have another type of coniferous tree, another evergreen, which is awesome in the early spring before we have the leaves come out on the deciduous trees. Uh, this here uh, is an eastern hemlock with totally flat uh, needles on it, and let's try and match this eastern hemlock with our uh, not spicy color matching. Okay, so here we go. I actually think this might be the darkest color. Um, it might even be a little bit darker than that, but I think it's closest uh, to shade number three, the dark green. Uh, so one more to go. We got the one in the middle. Let's go see if we can find something that's that middle green. Okay, here we have a bunch of different uh, mosses um, and some littler plants here. This is great stuff too. There's all sorts of different greens just within this little area here. Um, okay, so I'm looking for this middle shade of green on a not spicy page, and I think this will... Yeah, that's a pretty good match right there. Um, so there we go. There we go. I have uh, my three colors. I'm completed the not spicy, and now I'm going to move on to the spicy one. Uh, I'm excited to see what you guys find out there and uh, how spicy uh, of a challenge you guys are able to complete. So thanks for joining me out here today. I hope you guys uh, were able to find some things out in your backyards. Uh, and I'm excited to, to see uh, what you have found. Um, it's really important to think back on what are those reasons that those plants uh, might have different colors of green and try and uh, be your own little nature detective and, and, and 
speculate and think about why uh, the things that you found were the colors that they were. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you in the next virtual program. Bye for now.